tell us a little bit about your family and the farm and how you started producing coffee. Uh, hi, Roy. I'm Prakash from Riverdale. Uh, see, actually, me and my brother, we were studying uh, in a hill station uh, in, a, in a Tamil Nadu called Kodekanal. So we have a strong passion for uh, hill station. That is where we started. When we had an opportunity, we, we went to the farm. I mean, it, 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 the Chevrolet region is very close to uh, our native place, which is in Tamil Nadu, Salem. So we, we often go there as a tourist. And uh, when I had an opportunity to, to buy the uh, farm, my father uh, gave me all the funds. And me and my mom, we've been, uh, uh, been chasing, this, buy, to, chasing to buy this farm for six months. And by end, uh, we bought the farm. At the time when we bought the farm, he doesn't know anything. He doesn't know what coffee is and what, how, many, how many times it's called yield. He doesn't know anything. Then uh, we were just dragging. Uh, it, was, it was happening in 2005 and six. Then uh, we were just uh, going on investing on that. We didn't get anything, anything, no, no reply at all. So we, we just doesn't want to continue the farm. We were in a stage where to sell and fell trees and everything. Then finally, uh, one fine morning, uh, I was just thinking, okay, we are so young. Why don't we take a chance uh, to move further? Then we started uh, replanting the farm and uh, with all uh, latest irrigation methods. I believe in uh, science. So I always uh, work anything uh, more, more scientifically rather than uh, believing things I'm doing. So I was uh, investing my time uh, for better infrastructure and better plant varietal. And uh, I was, I was uh, just uh, going inside India to visit so many farms like Coop, the Karnataka, the other regions of India where they grow good coffees. Then I started realizing uh, the place where we are working is uh, really, uh, it's, it's a fantastic place because we have uh, workers in abundance here. We don't have any workers issue. And I started, since we've come from other industry, we have faced enough uh, problem with all the workers and we know where we are standing. So we made everything better. We made a proper environment for the workers to work and they all are paid properly and their families are taken care. Slowly, we started educating the people to make uh, the coffees. When Mon, uh, after, uh, when Mon came uh, to Australia for his studies, he always used to tell uh, uh, Prakash, you should visit uh, Melbourne to taste the coffees. This is a capital of the world for the coffees. I don't understand. Actually, we always uh, drink, uh, drink coffee with uh, milk. And Mon used to always tell uh, there are so many varieties which has been uh, which has been processed and the coming. I, I never believed. And accidentally we had a chance uh, to meet uh, Nathan from Cartel Roasters, and he the first guy who came here. And at the time uh, Mo was not here. Um, uh, Nathan and one of his other friend came here. I couldn't understand the language. That's how I started. So <laughs> whatever Nathan talks, I used to record on the phone. I used to send Mon because the slang I really don't understand. That's how that's how it happened. Then uh, actually, when, when, when they talk, when, was the, when they're talking about the specialty process and bricks, we, we were not aware of anything. We are, we are just farmers who can understand how to grow a plant, how the picking happens, how it has to be pulped. When, uh, the, when the industry is changing, it was really a shock for us to adapt for things. And it was, easy, it was not very easy for us uh, to make the workers comfortable because they've been used for generation to pick the cherries as half ripened and other things. When I went to them and I told, uh, you, you, you got to pick the cherries as full ripe and it has to be processed properly, it has to be fermented properly. And oh man, are you a fool doing some wasting time for this? <laughs> Nobody was respecting an industry and the, the worker strength slowly started decreasing because uh, they started expecting that I'm not going to continue as I'm doing all uh, idiot stuff. So I got to, <laughs> I'm going to quit the industry. That was a comment which was going on in the practical every day in the farm. Then they, after uh, taking this uh, natural fruit and making all the processing methods, when we cut the coffees first time, we understood, okay, this is uh, next level of coffees where uh, we really want to invest time. And after uh, Mohan used to always push me, telling that, uh, see, you all are behind uh, the industry and you are not really working on the right path. So he, uh, he bought me all the brewing equipment from Australia the first year when he was here. For when he went to overseas for studies and when he came back to India, he bought all the brewing equipments and everything. And still, uh, to be very honest, I haven't seen those equipments for a long time. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I was saying, man, you're just wasting. Then slowly, uh, after uh, using all stuff, uh, we understood uh, where we are standing. And finally, uh, Mon uh, pushed us and he took uh, Riverdale by putting the proper uh, cupping lab. 
and uh, we have a world class setup of lab in uh, riverdale and they slowly uh, we got we got a basic uh, roasting machine which was built in india so we, we he used to train uh, our guys mon used to train and my wife is really interested in all this uh, roasting and other stuff so we started cupping our own coffees and mon used to bring on all the coffees and we used to get all the coffees through online after cupping uh, so many coffees and uh, visiting so many farms like uh, in south america and other uh, regions i started understanding okay this is really going to help us only if you're going to do the process properly once after cupping things i we started uh, understanding where we are standing that's how that's how we came to the industry and it almost took 9 uh, years for us to properly understand where we are standing but now we are in the important factors what has to be done in the specialty industries maintaining the data that is very very important and uh, all the see the consistency is very very important in the industry because uh, if i tell see if this is all uh, an agriculture product this is not a machine made thing so there are a lot of uh, aspect which goes uh, the other way because uh, not uh, other way it doesn't mean uh, uh, see if uh, if in in a, in a proper elevation if we get uh, a bricks about uh, 20 and plus 25 plus this season and last season if you have seen there the brick should level should have been low or high it it depends on uh, the weather patterns and uh, the, the soil absorption the penetration of the plant roots so we always uh, maintain the plants with a healthy setup by pruning them every year i always believe that only by new wood you get a very consistent uh, cup so we always prune we have a very uh, different method of pruning a plant which usually doesn't happen in any other uh, growing regions because they always uh, just uh, stump the plant and uh, they used to allow uh, i mean uh, let us say one feet uh, right from the ground they just uh, cut the plant they allow the sucker to grow but whereas in india we always keep the mother plant uh, not to be cut we always uh, prune them the primaries are properly maintained the trachysis are pruned we have a different setup of working you got to visit a farm uh, so that you will exactly uh, absolutely understand because uh, <laughs> you 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 got a you got a better idea because you've been uh, traveling so many places and uh, you've been doing a lot of process so you see yeah. we learned that way because <laughs> that, that, that that is the nature of books no when yeah. when i when i really tried with the fruit uh, the first day when i opened the bag i told mon what is this this, this doesn't smell like coffee then mon was telling no 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 then we have got something wrong and we with cup when we cup the coffees oh man even uh, nobody will buy that nobody will buy it. even nobody wants to taste it that's how we started then we slowly that's started good. realizing what, what 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 was the first fruit you used in a in a in a coffee it was a mandarin that? it was a mandarin mandarin uh, because it was available in the farm it was easily available in the farm that's how uh, then we tried with the peels of oranges and everything and uh, it was it was all totally uh, it, it, it will become it is it, uh, the fungal was growing in the orange uh, peel and it has totally disturbed the coffee when we open the bag and we saw we saw it on the hand all the mold and uh, all the fungus is it is like oh man it's it's gone that's it you're not going to do anything that's how that's good uh, that's good that, that was the first exp- happening thing is we've got that 7 minutes left i'm just going to run through a couple other questions so that we get it all okay. in this um this has been fantastic and i'd like to do more conversations like that but just so we get something um is there any is there any special animals or trees or plants on the farm that are unique to to uh, riverdale we have a we have a indian bison we call as indian garu it's a very uh, very bold animal and that's a very unique animal which always uh, there but it's quite uh, controllable because riverdale is a farm which has been totally uh, fenced so we doesn't want to disturb the jungle animals anyway because i believe these are the specimens which really keep the forest healthy excellent that's great love that but mohan tell me what's the what's the bird on on the riverdale <laughs> we've got a oh, yeah. uh, uh, we've got obviously <laughs> that's a beautiful as story the, as you see the logo of of our brand is eagle we've got a specific uh, type of uh, eagle uh, it's more sentimental to my brother in the first place anyway so that's why he said more i want i want the eagle into incorporate it into my brand and uh, um it's uh, we've got diverse biodiversified sort of uh, trees we've got indian miners parrots um 
Uh, we don't have peacocks in there. We love to have a peacock there, but uh, we, no, we, now we have got peacocks. Now we have got peacocks. <laughs> we got we got peacocks there, but more, mostly um, uh, we've got obviously we've got our favorite uh, friends in the mountain. As you would cl- drive through the farm, or when you're coming up to the mountains, you would see a lot of uh, monkeys. Uh, monkeys as well. Uh, monkeys, which would, which would usually doesn't come to the farm, but it comes to the farm when the fruits are very ripened. Uh, which is quite interesting. They, you, you know, I mean, you could learn these things from your local tribes. They'll tell you if the monkeys are here, that means uh, uh, there are a lot of... The coffee are cherries are ready. Coffee cherries, coffee are, cherries ready. are ready to Plus harvest. Fruit, re- fruit trees are ready because they will go and knock on the fruit and they'll know exactly which one to pick. Prakash, yeah. um, Rohan said that the um, eagle had some special importance to you. Can you just tell me quickly as to actually, what that is. Actually, this is a local, uh, I mean, uh, Indian varietal of eagle, which is there in the farm. It is still uh, now available at the farm. We feed those eagles. And uh, actually, my father uh, used to believe uh, it's, eagle is a good sign for uh, Indian uh, community people. And uh, we pray the eagle because uh, we call